Since your most serene majesty and your high mightiness require of me a simple, clear, and direct answer, I will give you one, and it is this. I cannot submit my faith either to a, the Pope or to the Council, because it is as clear as noonday that they have fallen into error and even to glaring inconsistency with themselves. If then I am not convinced by proof from Holy Scripture or by cogent reasons, if I am not satisfied by the very text I have cited, and if my judgment is not in this way brought into subjection to God's word, I neither can nor will retract anything, for it cannot be either safe or honest for a Christian to speak against his conscience. Here I stand, I, can, I cannot do otherwise. God help me. Amen. Martin Luther was perhaps the most influential figure in the Protestant Reformation, which shook Europe to its core and was among the first movements to challenge the unchecked power of the Roman Catholic Church. Protestants today make up 40% of all Christians in the world, and are especially dominant in Northern Europe and the New World. However, Luther didn't intend to break away from the Catholic Church, at least not at first. His famous 95 Theses were almost entirely concerned with the now discontinued practice of selling indulgences, and in it, Luther expresses orthodox Catholic attitudes towards the papacy and other institutions of the church. It was not Luther's objections to indulgences that led to the Diet of Worms, which was perhaps the definitive moment when he declared his doctrinal opposition to the Roman church. The chief issue the church had with Luther was his stance on human salvation. Luther argued against the Catholic position of salvation through a lifelong process of faith, works, and sacraments in favor of the Protestant doctrine of salvation by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. He also argued that the authority of the Pope and of the Church itself must be subservient to scripture and to common reason. For these stances, Luther was excommunicated. By the end of his life, Luther had come full swing from being a loyal monk in service to Rome to a revolutionary political figure revered by many today. Was this shift indicative of the changing church or of Luther himself? I think that both the church and Luther were responsible for this change. Until the Council of Trent following the Reformation, Catholic doctrines of salvation had not yet been codified, and Luther's ideas weren't strictly heretical. In that way, the church had to change, or at least standardize her own doctrine in order to condemn Luther. More importantly, though, Luther's change was a personal one. He began his protest as an incomplete thought, simply having an issue with indulgences. He took this issue as far as it would go and used this opposition to contradict the church in other, more important ways. Luther's change in doctrine represents his personal shift in theology along with a personal growth and study. This personal study and change is indicative of the Reformation as a whole, being centered on personal reading of the scriptures, which is further indicative of European culture as a whole at the time, as Western society reached the humanism that is found during the Enlightenment. Good morning, Reverend Finkler. Are you ready to talk about Mr. Martin Luther? Yes. Okay, first question. What, were, what do you think were Luther's primary motivations in the Reformation? I believe uh, church reform within the church. Uh, he wasn't interested in dividing the church. Uh, he saw some of the dark practices of the time and wanted to bring attention to these. And I believe he, uh, he also wanted to bring the word to the people. He wanted to translate the, the Bible into the language of the people. Those were a couple of his motivations. Okay. And how did Luther's doctrine evolve over the course of the Reformation? Uh, Luther's doctrine it, uh, advanced more after he was dead. Uh, like any movement, it starts with well intent. It starts well intentioned and is then corrupted over time through the actions of others. Okay, and finally, to what extent do you believe that Luther's motivations were political? I mean, he was protected by German princes who wanted to rid themselves of the authority of the Holy Roman Emperor. Yes. Now, now I don't believe that Luther's motivations were political. What is unfortunate, like you said, is some of the, his supporters and followers, like the German princes, were political, and his ideas were politicized. Uh, Luther himself wanted reform from within the church, and it was his actions, not his motivations, that sparked the external reform by others. Oh, thank you, Reverend.